Hi, I'm Ian Goldsmith with Akana. I want to walk you through a really quick demo about how do you create an API from scratch using the designer built into the latest version of our platform. As you can see, I'm already logged in. So I'm just going to simply go choose to add a new API from scratch, imaginatively name it my API, and I have a handy dandy endpoint that I can use for a back end already. So I'm really just going to create a proxy for this API. When I save this, the platform is going to create a default mapping for me, which is going to have a single operation. In this case, it creates a get operation with a path that slurps anything you choose to put on there. I'm going to get a little more sophisticated with the way I define my API, so I'm going to remove this default path and add a couple of different resources. I'm going to start by adding a resource at the root URL for get and post. That would normally be a list and add operation. And I'm going to add another resource which will use a path parameter of ID, and that's going to have a get, a put, and a delete for read resource, update resource, and remove resource. And I'll save that. I'm going to choose to update the default media types because my API is going to support XML or JSON in and out. In fact, the backend service is XML only, so one of the things we'll see here is the platform's capability to dynamically generate JSON content from XML objects. Now, a couple of other things I want to show you. If I dive into one of these operations, we'll see that it automatically created a path, uh, a path parameter of ID. And if I want to, I can get in and create a little bit more information about it. I can choose to add a description. As soon as I click on that, it takes me straight into a markdown editor where I can use markdown out of the gate. So this is my read resource method. Um, this returns resource objects. I actually typed that correctly. And I can use uh, backtick code syntax. It's a GitHub flavored markdown, so I could choose to add a bit of content. Um, I'm a little too lazy to actually add the full definition of what the resource would look like. Um, so I'll create about as simple a JSON document as I can imagine, and I'll close my description. And I can go ahead, create an operation ID, which I like, um, read. Uh, read is good enough, in fact. And this is the read resource operation. I'll save that. I could go through and create that kind of documentation for each of the operations here, but for now I'm just going to skip through that. I could also create models so I could formally define the model objects for the request and response types, but in this case I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to let the product deal with the, the basics that it has in play where it'll use uh, the bodies um, uh, by default and return default bodies and basically structure any type in the, in the data that's allowed. I'm going to go ahead and save that. And that will create an API proxy for me. We'll see the design structure and specified using a Swagger form. Um, and I can look at the list of endpoints that we created out of the gate. So some fairly simple things going on here. Um, when I look at the implementations, these are the, the different endpoints available for the product. I've got one implementation, which is live. So this implementation is now published in production. And I've got HTTPS and HTTP endpoints for the various locations where the API is hosted. Now, I don't really feel like having the API currently hosted in Europe, so I'm going to turn that off. So by editing my endpoints, I can select the European endpoint and disable that. When I save that, we're going to see the list of endpoints drop to just two, the HTTPS and HTTP endpoints available in, uh, in North America. And I'm actually also going to choose to add a policy because I'd like to have a little bit of detailed auditing going on so I can see what's happening with my API. So I've attached the detailed auditing policy. Now I'm basically done. I've created an API, loaded into the system, and it's published and ready to go. If I look at the documentation for the API, in our basic default Swagger documentation, we have a built-in test client. So I can go ahead and send a test request, and we get a response back. I didn't really want XML. I'd much rather have JSON. So let's see what happens when I pull that back in JSON form. The gateway mediated it dynamically. I can look at the formatted content so I can see the data. Seems to work pretty well. Let's try one of the other operations. I'm going to grab an ID here, go look at the get ID, and I'll see my documentation that I extensively wrote earlier, structured in here. I can add the ID that I just pulled out of that list into the required ID parameter. Again, I'm going to pick JSON because it's easy to read, and I'll invoke that. And here we go, we've seen the response that's come back to me from the API. 
So that was it. That's the process of very simply adding an API, adding some basic simple documentation, setting the endpoints, adding a policy, and going ahead and sending a couple of test requests to make sure it all works. All done in just a couple of minutes.